Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How are you all doing? Welcome back to some more Game of Thrones Total War on the channel. We're going to be starting a campaign as House Greyjoy on the War of the Five Kings scenario. We're back playing on the Enhanced mod. I'll put the link in the description below for you guys to check out the mod. We're going to be playing for a few hours here today as always, then edit down a full campaign into one video. Alright, so the challenge for today's video for the Greyjoys is for Theon to eliminate the Stark boys Rickon and Bran and take Winterfell. I mostly want to focus on raiding and occupying settlements. Uh, the North, Lannisport and Casterly Rock. Uh, we could probably try and take the Shield Islands as well. Same with Harrenhal. I basically just want to be a Viking raider, which would be cool. So I want to also raid to become the richest faction in the game. So, if I can't do those challenge conditions, I'll consider this video challenge a failure. Alright, so let's set sail, as the Ironborn do, and they also do not sow. Hope you guys enjoy. Okay guys, welcome to the campaign map. So we're playing as Balon Greyjoy, Lord of Pike, the King of Salton Rock. <laughs> the Iron Islands are an amazing defendable position. They are perfectly situated for lightning raids on the Westel uh, Westeros Westerlands. Well, I guess Westerlands technically, but the Westerosi mainland. Uh, we have really great axe troop quality. We've even got decent archers and long ships as well, but we really lack like metal armor, and but that's because they preference a boiled leather over everything. But we've also got a lack of cavalry as well, and same with our finances. So there's a lot of good things about the Greyjoys if you play with them like sort of a, a Viking lightning raid sort of style, but up against a pitched, heavy, sort of armoured medieval battle against the Lannisters in the open field, eh, we might get caught. So we've really got to be in and out, occupying, sacking settlements. Where is everyone situated? So Balon is currently in Pike. Diplomacy wise, we are currently at war with House Stark and House Bolton. We are allied with the Night's Watch. We've declared our kingship. So Balon is the faction leader. Ah, oh, Yara is the factioneer as well, but she's been married off. No, oh, that's annoying. I would have liked to marry her off. Yeah, because I wanted to have... Well, even if she was the heir, we could have had future heirs through her line rather than Theon. Which it's probably going to fall to. Uh, we've also got Euron, the Crow's Eye, which is he's based off the book. Victarion's there as well, along with the damp hair. Alright. Cool. So, from the Iron Islands, we'll focus on the Westerlands first. And we need to check our holdings in the north as well. So we do have Moat Kaelin, which I think it's broken at the moment, the settlement. It's been broken for a while. I haven't been ever to able to get it working. So if we do have a battle there, we're not going to be able to play it, but... I doubt that's going to happen. It was more so going to happen in the Stark campaign, which we've already done. So Harris Harlaw's up there with Nightfall. I could give that to someone else, or maybe he, uh, he could keep it. So we've got Theon and Dagmar, kind of near Torrance Square, pushing over from Blackpool. Okay, so we need to rally everyone up to a central location. I think the Lord's Port is probably the play. Euron's here. With Salt Cliff, Botley, and other Harlaws. Might even bring some of the Black Tides. We'll send Victarion to Winterfell to rally up with Dagmar and his nephews and niece. Or nephew Theon and niece Yara. Well, we've got an opportunity here to intercept Roderick Cassell, the Castellan of Winterfell. And it might be advantageous for us to push into Torrent Square. I know Theon was heading to Winterfell, but we might as well take Torrent Square while we're here. Tall hearts inside. Oh, what? Why has he brought Rickon out? Well, we'll just play this one then. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. So we have an opportunity here with Theon to get rid of... And eliminate Rickon Stark. I guess Bran is back in Winterfell, maybe. So we've got some Greyjoy cavalry here. One unit. Which, I don't know, I kind of wish that Greyjoys just didn't have any. Or make it super, super rare. 
But here is Dagmar Clefjaw with the Ironborn Bodyguard, and here is Theon Greyjoy. So Theon, Victarion, Yara can push to Winterfell because we want to try and take that. And we'll try and take the majority of the North. But there is Rickon Stark. <laughs> I do actually quite like those models. It's a nice touch. Some of them look a little bit goofy. Some of them are better than others. But I actually quite like the the Stark ones of Rickon and Bran. But I can't even imagine the effort that goes into like modding <laughs> and getting this stuff over. Like, I have no clue. It probably took so long <laughs> to even get either of those models in, I would imagine. So we've got Stark reinforcements coming on here. From what I can remember, I think some of those general models are actually imported from the Seven Kingdoms Total War Attila mod. So if we can get rid of Roderick Cassell and Rickon, the quicker the better. So we're just trying to wrap around and surround them make sure they don't break or run away and then Tallheart with the garrison from Torrent Square we should be able to deal with quite easily so we've got some halberds or pike units technically pushing I think they'd, I think they'd be halberds even though they look more so like pike but you've got to give it to little old Rickon a character very much forgotten in the show. <laughs> he's, he's in the book a lot more. But yeah. Alright. Nearly defeating these two bodyguard units now. But I feel like with Rickon, <laughs> maybe he's one of those characters they probably could have gotten rid of. Uh, anyway, we've just gotten rid of him here now as well. So, Rickon Stark is no more. It's going to be pretty hard to find Rob. I don't think... We're ever probably going to come across him. Maybe, if we eventually make our way through the Riverlands. Because we do want to try and take Harren Hall. One of the ancient... I don't know. Greyjoy, Ironborn holdings. Harren the Black, of course. We... Definitely want to try and take that. Yeah, I kind of think it was like an old ancestral stronghold. But we're going to be making our way all across Westeros in this series. I'm not really too opposed to attacking every single house. If we want to raid our way to eventually become the richest and most, most wealthy faction rather than the Lannisters. Okay, let's form up here because the garrison from Torrent Square is moving up. So, these northern swordsmen, probably in combat, hand to hand, will give us a little bit of grief. But if we can surround them, we can take them out the Greyjoy way. Okay, our Greyjoy archers are getting some shots off and tall hearts now. Moving up. But I'm definitely open to be doing more of these Game of Thrones Total War campaigns. So, let me know in the comments what houses you would like me to do. Um, I don't really mind about the particular order, but I'm open to be doing Tyrell, Martell, Renly Baratheon, Aaron. Someone even suggested in the comments the Night's Watch or the White Walkers, which is actually a not, a, a not a bad shout. I didn't even mention those. I guess those are potential options. I always tend to personally play as the Houses of Westeros as, I don't know, a white, sort of a White Walker zombie invasion sort of campaign might be kind of fun. But yeah, I, 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 I kind of find the Night's Watch a little bit boring, <laughs> to be honest. I always get triggered when someone gets sent to the wall. Okay. Alright, just going to finish off the last of the Starks here. Yeah, so I want to sort of preference houses. Maybe I need to do poles. I don't know. But we've won our first good fight, a clear victory. 
So now with destroying those two armies, we actually drew out this the garrison from Torrent Square. And we managed to eliminate them on the battlefield. So we're going to be able to push and take our first northern castle under my regime. So Torrent Square is under Greyjoy occupation. Oh, so, Victarion is now sieging out Winterfell, and we've moved up Harris Harlaw as well. So we have rather a decent force in the north. So let's assault this one. So Bran's inside with half a stack, and Victarion has rallied up here with Theon. So we'll push on and fight this one with Victarion. Okay. Let's start the battle. So here is Winterfell. Not a custom settlement, but those drum towers do look awfully similar to sort of the depiction, particularly some of the artwork and the depiction in the books. Not so much in the TV show, I guess. So it's a fortress. We need to move up two battering rams before we can make our way in. So Victorian Greyjoy, the senior commander, is going to take this one while he's... Nephew Theon is being second in command, and Bran is in Winterfell. Okay, so let's move on everyone up and start the Siege of Winterfell. Theon with a rather large host. So we've gotten rid of Rickon, or did we? No, we definitely did. <laughs> Rickon is no more. So then that, once we get rid of Bran, if we're victorious here today, which I imagine we will be, it's 60% in our favour. We don't usually throw away battles like this too often. Let's so move up our archers and our siege equipment. Start peppering them. But yeah, that means Rob and Sansa are the only two left in the family tree. Those arrow towers are really quite ripping through us. So we've got some Stark Bowmen there, getting their shots off down upon us. The last campaign I did was a House Stark campaign, so I do recommend checking that out if you haven't already. And then a couple weeks ago we did a House Lannister campaign, which was a lot of fun. So we're slowly but surely making our way to the walls of Winterfell. And then Greyjoy, Greyjoys, the Ironborn, can swarm through the city streets. They're moving some of their Stark swordsmen back a little bit. But we should be alright, even if we take mass losses in this siege, which is always a risk. Defensive sieges. Like, being the aggressor, being on the offensive, you do lose we tend to lose more casualties than the defendant. We do have Harris Harlaw close by with some reinforcements if need be. The Greyjoy arch archers are loosing some of, their, some of their shots off at the back. Perfect. Okay, the gateway is now broken. And we can move on our boys in. And we can hopefully try and target Bran. Alright, let's... Get my other unit on the battering ram to now move up. It's always worth moving the two battering rams up at the same time. Instead of one by one. The last thing you want is one of your precious rams to get engulfed by flames. Because they only have like, what, two, three fire trajectories? Those towers. So, you're better off dividing up the shots. So we've made our way into the city, just past the gatehouse, and the Greyjoys are carving their way like carving a cake atop of the walls. The Ironborn are officially in Winterfell. 13 to 11. We have slightly lost more. Okay, the Ram is making its way to the... City Square, and we are taking mass Greyjoy casualties to do sh so. So Bran was actually not in the last line of defense, he was actually sort of 
out the back, but there is Winterfell. Has that been added? Maybe. They do have that sort of wooden, I don't know, sort of, looks like a sort of like a fletching station from Stronghold. <laughs> Crusade, that's what it sort of reminds me on that sort of outlook there. We're making our way further through. And those Stark Guard really pack a punch. 46 now to 26. So still a fair decent of our Greyjoy boys are gone. So we're focusing on the north here at the moment because we tend to have more military assets in the north. And then we'll send Balon and, and Euron and the rest of the Iron Fleet. Because most of our navy was actually in the north. We're heading our way down to the westlands. Well, we'll focus on that once we pack a punch in the north. I don't know if we're going to be able to take the entirety of it. We might be able to. I don't know if we should go against the Boltons. Okay, we've managed to break our way through the final and second last gatehouse with our ram. And we're going to be able to make our way into the city square. Okay. Some of my units here just focusing on some Starks there. Alright, charge on in quickly now. Winterfell will be ours. It's only a matter of time. So we just need to take out the Stark holding it. As there always must be a Stark in Winterfell. Until there wasn't a fair few times, but whatever. <laughs> I wonder if that's sort of coded for that. That there always should be a Stark in Winterfell. That just happens to be. I kind of forgot about that in my <laughs> Stark campaign. Because I wanted to make Bran and, and Rickon warriors. Okay. Mustn't be too long now. Oh, what? Oh, no! Um... I thought that was Bran gone, but we've just lost Victarion. Oh, far out. That's annoying. Out of... I reckon out of all the Greyjoys, Victarion is probably my favourite. I don't mind Neuron, but I don't mind Victarion. Oh, wow. No, that's Bran there. Damn, I, I just assumed when that notification popped up, it was the Stark boy. Oh, well, oh, there he goes. Bran has fallen on top of his horse. The Prince of Winterfell is no more. We've initiated the countdown. And we've won. We've won, but at a pretty huge cost. Victorian Greyjoy. My uncle is no more. Maybe it was a little bit of Greyjoy treachery. Potentially. Oh, that's super annoying. Because, no. He didn't have any heirs either. So it's now just Euron and the Dampere. Well, at least he won't be a... A... I don't know. A succession candidate, I guess. Oh well, that's a shame. <laughs> he was a really good commander as well. What, six or seven star? Damn it. Oh well. Okay, so we've been focusing on Winterfell in the north quite a bit. It's time to focus on the Lannisters. So I've sent Balon, Euron, the Iron Fleet, and every single man and body we can muster from the Iron Islands. So we're going to disembark with the full stack and attack Castanly Rock. Thankfully, the Westerlands is deserted as they're focusing on the Starks and the Tullys in the Riverlands. So we're at war with House Lannister and House Stark. We'll move in now. And my alliance with the Night's Watch is no more. That's alright. And we'll move in Baylor Blacktide, or as I like to call him, Athelstan. <laughs> I watch so many of those type of shows, <laughs> like Vikings and The Last Kingdom stuff. So I recognize a lot of these portraits. So it's a little bit. Off throwing. I guess if you don't watch the sh like heaps of TV medieval shows where they get the images from, um, you wouldn't notice. But it can be a little bit jarring. 
So Martin Lannister's inside with not too many. What about in Lannisport as well? Oh, Stefford's only inside. So we should be able to hopefully get some vengeance back on the Greyjoys the last time they did this. And the King of Storm End's been declared. Okay, um... Well, I guess we'll play this one. Did they not... Uh, did they spawn any units? No. Let's fight this one. We've got to have the Siege of Castle Rock with Balon. Alright, welcome to the battle map. We also can't really afford to lose this either. either. So it is a... Well, it's, it's a similar fortress, same as Winterfell. But it tends... It actually is a little bit harder because they've moved the gateway to the other side of the fort. So it will take us a little bit longer for us to navigate through the streets of Castle Rock. Okay, we've moved my... We've moved everyone up. This time around, we've actually got some... Pretty decent siege equipment, which is good. We have a unit of catapults. We've even got some trebuchet as well. We haven't got too many infantry on its own. Mostly just our general's bodyguard. But here are some of the units here. So... That's Euron. <laughs> yeah, kind of looks like him. Show Euron, rather than the black-haired... One-eyed crow's eye. <laughs> uh, who else we got here? Does Balon have a? No, that's Harlow. Ha Harlow has one. No, nah, Balon Greyjoy doesn't have a model. That's all right. But Harlow does. Okay, fair enough. Here are the Greyjoy units. So, this is without turns. Too many turns of recruitment in the Iron Islands. What we can muster. Oh wow. Look how impressive these guys look. Quite menacing on the walls, the Lannisters. Alright, let's push up and take Casterly Rock. Because I really want to sack Casterly Rock and Lannisport. Because I'm not too overly concerned about holding it. Like we'll build it we'll build some an army and a garrison there just to hold it as as much as we can, because the income is not too bad. Man, this, this settlement is super tricky. There's actually not too many positions for us to attach our ladders to the walls and make our way up. Yeah. So we managed to quite quickly get about a, a stack while we've got like two and a half in the north. Okay, so I'm going to get my catapults to aim for the arrow towers. If we can get rid of them... We might be able to save some Greyjoy lives, because, yeah. Just the way the streets have angled, they're not horizontal, they're vertical. So, yeah, we're not going to be able to get our catapult shots off well, just because of the angle of them. Well, not really vertical, but yeah. We're not going to be able to hit them straight on. And they're not even intertwining their units in the streets overly too much anyway. What a crazy sight. <laughs> Trebuchets in Westeros. It's kind of cool. I like it. I like the medieval two catapults and, and trebuchet. Ironborn Longbowman here. Getting some shots up and over the walls. And we're slowly but surely moving our Greyjoy boys onto the Castle Rock Wall. Probably could move my battering ram slightly a little bit closer. Because it needs to hit that secondary wall. They move their cavalry closer as well. But the Lannisters and the Greyjoys. Again, decades in the future, I'm fighting each other hand to hand. Gotta watch out for these loyal soldiers as they are trained and paid by Tywin Lannister. Hopefully, him and Jamie don't double back to the Westerland coast because 
That could be a rather large problem to deal with. Okay, sweet. We've managed to break down the gate. I'm going to be able to swarm in our units. So, I feel like the Greyjoys wouldn't sit too far back and allow other Ironborn to lead from the front. I think we should just chuck everyone in and see how we go. Shame we lost Victar in, but he went out of Greyjoy way. But my god, check out the crazy, awesome animations here. These Greyjoy Great Axemen are absolutely smashing and wrecking their way through the <laughs> Lannister Swordsman. What a fantastic sight. Oh my. <laughs> Let's have you. Well, it's going to be quite a decent coin purse here, once we raid it. We're even engaging the cavalry. Okay, we've managed to win on the casterly rock wall. And now we're engaging the general's bodyguard. So Martin Lannister, hopefully will be no more. Followed by Stafford Lannister in a moment. So, once we take Castly Rock, I guess we push to Lannisport. Then we've got a decision to make. Should I move this army down to the Shield Islands? There's not, like, the House Tyrell occupied territory. Martin Lannister's gone now. Because in the books... Oh, yeah, that's it. Because in the books... that in the, in the show, they don't really talk about the Shield Islands, do they? It's like these islands that are a lot smaller than the Iron Islands down the south, just off the west of the Reach. And they have a very similar warning system, let's say, to the fire beacons in Tolkien's universe between Gondor and Rohan, I'm pretty sure, from what I can remember. Yeah, they have like a fire system, so if they see Ironborn or, or Greyjoy ships and long ships on the horizon. They light the beacons and let the inhabitants of the Shield Islands know that <laughs> the Greyjoy Raiders are coming. The Ironborn are coming. Uh, okay, so we've actually managed to get rid of them here. We were breaking the gateway to the town square, but they've actually given up. These guys here aren't even able to be let back into the Castly Rock Town Square. So, I guess we'll end it there. We won. Sweet. Alrighty, Castly Rock is now ours. And we get 8,200 from sacking. Perfect. Okay, let's now move to Lannisport as well. Where Baylor Black Tide has built some siege equipment. We'll move the garrison from Castly Rock out. Just for... Moral support, <laughs> I guess, and we should be able to take Lannisport from Stafford Lannister. Whoa, nearly 20,000. We're up to 30,000 in our treasury. It's going to take us a little bit more gold and wealth for us to become the number one richest faction. But hopefully we can do so. We'll build a shrine to our gods. And I think it's time to move out. We've taken Castly Rock and Lannisport. I think what I'll do is I'll send this full stack north. We'll make our way through the Riverlands. I think I'll move these two armies to Harrenhal because it's going to take us quite a while to get there. And any other forces can head south. All right, back up into the north. Theon Greyjoy can take Castle Serwyn now. And the Starks mustn't have two more force, many more forces in the north. So, we'll just let him up there and put the army to use in the north. Ah, House Lannister wants and are willing for peace. We'll accept that, which is quite surprising. Cool. House Frey want trade rights in map information. I ideally would like some I mean, an alliance with them. No, they're not interested. Goodbye. Okay, back up in the north. Theon and his full stack are going to be able to take Hornwood. 
There isn't too many more valuable settlements in the north, maybe apart from White Harbour. But we'll just allow Theon to continue to put this army to use. We might even be able to take the entirety of the north. Okay, skipped a little bit ahead. Theon has made his way all the way down to White Harbour. And Wyman Manderley um, is inside along with small John Umber. So we'll just auto resolve this one. But I am curious to see how much we can get. 15,000, so nearly as much as Lannisport, which is cool. But the north is falling for the Starks. We are the largest faction. Now, okay, so this is the pop-ups where we see. So, oh, we're also the richest faction. <laughs> we're the most advanced as well. Oh, good. Well, we've hit that with 63,000 in the bank. Okay, King Balon Greyjoy and the army has made all their way to Harrenhal. It's taken a little while. It took us 11 turns. Tom and Baratheon is actually sieging Harrenhal with Roos Bolton inside. So, we'll see how that goes. We could very well be fighting... Uh, House Joffrey Baratheon. Back up in the north, Theon is still doing his Theon thing. <laughs> We're attacking Old Castle here on the coast, and it should fall. Andre Locke is inside, and I'm pretty sure that's Skarsgård, potentially? Yeah, I don't know what movie it's from. It's that actor, though. Okay, so I did want to go down to the Shield Islands, so this is the South Shield Island. So we managed to get an army from, it's just Ironborn and what we could get from Castle Rock as well. We've actually got some Golden Company units there because we built that building that popped up. It did cost quite a bit, so we'll negotiate here with House Tyrell. I don't usually have a diplomat in this, we've got Soul Cliff here. So give me the South Shield Islands, except, or we will attack, for we are Ironborn. We take what we want, we do not sow. So, I thought there'd be more settlements down here instead of just the one. Which is unfortunate. But I guess their lighting system didn't work this time. Alright, back over to Harren Hall now. So, it looks like, although... Yeah, although Tommen had sieged it, he knocked out half the garrison. So, we'll fight this one with Karstark and Roos Bolton inside. Oh, unfortunately, guys, we had a game crash. I've tried to play this a few times, but for some reason, the settlement of Harrenhal is bugged. Um, I don't know why. So, unfortunately, we're going to have to order resolve this one against the Leech Lord. And we'll take Harrenhal. But we played a fair few sieges in this, so I'm not overly too disappointed with that. But now we're up to 80,000. We've got 100,000 in the bank. So, we've managed to push over and take Harrenhal from House Bolton. I thought the Tullys might have potentially owned it. But, uh, yeah. Balon Greyjoy, the Lord of Pike, the King of Salt and Rock, has taken Harrenhal, the famed fortress. Okay, we're going to be able to take the South Shield Islands now. The beacons weren't lit. We managed to dampen them on our <laughs> approach, I guess. And we're going to be able to take it off Seri there. And have our first fight against a rather small Tyrell host. So yeah, we've got some Golden Company units here, which I forgot. It's kind of the Golden Company in this Medieval 2 in the Game of Thrones mod kind of acts as like the Templar Chapel. Uh, Castly Rock and Lannisport are still under our control. Because we've built quite large garrisons here. And we've managed to take a huge chunk of Stark territory. There mustn't have many more left. Family tree-wise, we're at war with nearly every faction. Theon has had a son. Euron has had a daughter as well. Along with the Dampere. Unfortunately, Yara uh, hasn't had any children though. So yeah. I think that's all we've got time for. We've gone and hit the sent out challenge conditions I did. So I wanted Theon to eliminate the Stark boys, Rickon and Bran, which we did. We took Winterfell. Um, 
There was sort of no other objectives in the north. We took White Harbour and a fair few settlements in the north. We took Lannisport and Castle Rock. I did want to make an attempt at taking the Shield Islands, but I thought there'd be more territory down there, to be honest. But Balon Greyjoy occupies territory from Winterfell, Harrenhal, and from Casterly Rock to Pike. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I've had an absolute blast playing today. I'm going to play the outro, but stay tuned for more content on the channel. Unfortunately, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Check out my social media links in the description below if you'd like to stay connected with me. Let me know feedback and suggestions for the video. Got to say a huge thank you to my patrons and channel members. Victor K, Sebastian C, Jordan K, Caesar L, Brian S, Tal, Liam B, Kyle P, Tom C, and Wyatt P. But thanks guys, my name has been Simsy, much love from Australia, goodbye.